Let's go back one year to the end of the 2014 college football season. The SEC was coming off a seven and five bowl campaign that was much worse than the record on the surface because the top five teams from the vaunted SEC Western Division lost. And probably the best bowl win for the SEC in 2014 was over Louisville or Minnesota. So not a good year for the SEC. They did not get to the national championship game for the first time in forever, 2005. And the Pac-12 was coming off a great season, going 13-6 and six against the other Power Five conferences and with a lot of quality wins, including Florida State, Michigan State, Kansas State, uh, a UCLA win there in postseason play. Okay, so the talk was that the Pac-12 had possibly caught up to the SEC. Now, let's uh, move ahead to 2015, and we're breaking it down here on Mark Rogers TV as we do in rating the conferences. So we are rating specifically games played between the Power Five conferences. So this is how the Pac-12 fared in 2015, nothing close to 2014. The record at eight and nine, but let's delve deeper. So in those eight wins for the Pac-12 against the other Power Five conferences, the Pac-12 teams were 83 and 36. Don't put a whole lot of weight on that, but I do on the conference record. So it measures how strong those Pac-12 teams were against a consolidated schedule against their competition from the other Power Five leagues. 54 and 29, so nearly a two to one ratio, about a 65% winning percentage for the Pac-12 teams taking on teams that won 26 and 16 in their leagues. And one of the reasons why there are so few games played within the leagues for their opponents was a lot of games against Notre Dame and BYU. And of course they are independents. So those teams went 67 and 36. So the Pac-12 won those eight games. So they include the Stanford demolition of Iowa in the Rose Bowl. Cal defeated Texas 45-44. The big Utah win on opening night against Michigan. A five seed for Utah in the Pac-12 against a four seed in the Big Ten. Good win for the Pac-12 there. Utah defeated BYU. We gave BYU, yes, a subjective six rating and if you've seen our other videos we are seeding to give uh, context to these uh, rankings we are seeding the teams in each conference one through 10 in the big 12 12 in the pac 12 and one through 14 in the other three conferences all right ucla de defeated virginia not a huge win stanford over notre dame like seeding there washington state defeated miami in the sun bowl ucla over byu both six seats so the, the wins weren't great. Uh, probably the best win here defeated Iowa, the second ranked team in the Big Ten. Uh, the Michigan win over uh, with, with Utah defeating the Wolverines, uh, Stanford, Notre Dame, but no lower seeded teams in the Pac-12 rose up and defeated higher seed teams uh, in the other conferences. So the average seed for the Pac-12 in these eight wins, a four and a half seed defeating a five seed. So they did pretty well there, considering they won all eight of those games. Okay, the losses, nine losses for the Pac-12. So 13 and six in 2014, eight and nine this season. So on the surface, not nearly as good a season for the Pac-12. Of course, the big loss for Stanford, a one seed in the Pac-12 as the champion, lost to a five seed in Northwestern. And people dismiss that game, it's on record it happened. 16 to six Northwestern. There were a couple other games where Lower seeded teams from other conferences defeated higher seeds in the Pac-12. Nebraska in the bowl game, Foster Farms Bowl win over UCLA, really dominated that game. Huskers an eight seed in the Big Ten, UCLA a six seed in the Pac-12. Also, USC Wisconsin like seeded game, but still a Wisconsin six seed in the Big Ten defeated USC in the Holiday Bowl. USC is the champion of the South, a five seed in the Pack 12, and uh, we have run down the seedings, 1 through 12 in the Pack 12. So again, Stanford loses to Northwestern, Oregon with a loss against Michigan State. Those are two seed versus two seed games. Oregon State loses to Michigan, not a big deal there. Oregon State's a 12 seed, the very last seed, no wins in the Pack 12. Arizona State lost to Texas A&M. Big loss for the Pac-12. Those are like-seeded teams, an 8-9 game. USC lost to Notre Dame. The aforementioned USC lost to Wisconsin. UCLA lost to Nebraska, as we mentioned. Oregon TCU, that could have significantly helped this rating, but Oregon blew the game late against TCU at the Alamo Bowl. That's a 2-3 versus three seed, and Arizona State 
lost a, another close one, a one-point game uh, in the desert against West Virginia, the five seed from the Big 12, Arizona State, the nine. And then we adjusted the seedings because, of, of course, if you're a seven seed in the Big 12 out of 10 teams, that's different than being a seven seed in a 14-team league like the Big Ten, the SEC, and the ACC. So we adjusted the seedings to make it fair. So in the losses, the nine losses, the Pac-12 teams were 47 and 34. So some pretty good Pac-12 teams were losing to teams that were a little bit better in their conferences, 43 and 23, teams that almost went two to one ratio wins the losses. So the average seed in the nine of Pac-12 losses, a 5.7 seed for the Pac-12, a 4.7 for the teams that they lost to in the other Power Five leagues. So what this means here is that we started with 20 points for each win and loss, meaning that that particular conference, in this case, the Pac-12, would get 20 points for a like-seeded win. So for example, Cal defeated Texas, both seven seeds. Okay, so that would mean that the Pac-12 gets a plus 20. They get 20 points. Had they lost, they get deducted 20 points. That's a 20-point loss. Okay, then we adjust for seedings. So for example, USC Notre Dame. Notre Dame, a one seed is an independent. Not a great example, but still, hang with me, a one seed. USC, the five. So we don't discredit the back 12 the full 20 points because they're playing up in seedings. The five lost to a one, that's a four seed difference. So they lose the game, but it's only a 16 point loss for the Pac-12. So we come out with a quality of wins and losses in 18.6 to a 17, which bodes well for the Pac-12 slightly. And then we will multiply it by the wins and losses. And you can't really get a good a feel for our system until we compare all of them. So check out the Big 12 and also check out the ACC. We've got the Big 10 and the SEC on deck and we will knock those out. And then we'll bring it all together and let you know the best conference in college football against one another. So we're not definitively saying this is the best conference because we're not taking into account horrendous FCS losses. We're not taking into account a group of five losses, wins, quality wins over a Navy or a Memphis, somebody like that, Boise State, or again, bad losses against the group of five. But this is a closed form. If you think about it, these are just power five games against each other. So we, we, we don't have the issue of trying to determine how strong a Colorado State is on a Minnesota schedule. Uh, for example, or an FCS win where some of those teams are fairly competitive and would probably finish 10th or 11th in a Power 5 conference versus some that are just walkovers. This is a closed form, the, the Power 5 against each other, where the Pac-12 went 8-9, and nine. doesn't appear to be on the surface. Again, nearly as good as the 13-6, and six, in which the Pac-12 proved to be objectively the best conference in terms of the games played amongst the Power 5 in 2014. Check back with us. We'll knock out the Big Ten and the SEC and then put it all together right here on Mark Rogers TV.